Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to the July edition of the Suppliers in the Spotlight webinar series presented by the Infrastructure Sustainability Council. My name is Andrea Macris, I'm the Head of Business Engagement here at the IS Council and I have the very pleasant task of introducing you to six businesses who offer products and services across Australia and New Zealand that can support your sustainability goals that you have set for your organisation or your infrastructure project. Whether you're working on a um, developing a smarter, more sustainable design or seeking to create a positive legacy by leveraging an infrastructure uh, project or asset that's existing, uh, the six suppliers being featured today are very keen to collaborate with you. Each of these suppliers is featured on the IS Council's iSupply directory, which for those that are unfamiliar is an online marketplace for sustainability oriented products and services, and it sits on the IS Council's website. Um, for those undertaking the innovation challenge as part of your IS rating, engaging with these IS suppliers may support your rating outcome, as well as sustainability outcomes more broadly. Before we take a quick look at the agenda for today, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge country and pay my respects to the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, wherever that may be for you. I'm on the lands of the Bediagal people of the Eora Nation here in Southwest Sydney, but we will be hearing from suppliers from a variety of countries across Australia. A brief look at the agenda for our time together today. Um, firstly, we'll be hearing from Scott Losey at Losey Consulting, then on to Ben Hoff from Vital Chemical, and then Mariana Perez from One Click LCEA. Following these first three presenters, we'll have a Q&A session, and then we'll have three more presenters, Nils Barry from Aspire, Adrian Carhill from Rainforest Concrete Pipes Australia, and Adam Ferguson from SiteHive. Following the webinar, you will be able to access a recording. All the contact information of the speakers and any unanswered questions from the Q&A will be addressed in writing, provided they aren't posted anonymously. So while you are more than welcome to take notes, we've got you covered. As you're listening to each of the businesses during their allocated three or four minute spot, please pop your questions into the Q&A widget at the bottom of your screen. Are we drawing on a selection of your questions during the Q&A? So please do jot them down as they occur to you. As you're listening to people, there are no silly questions. Um, so please don't be shy. And it's very likely that others will want to know the answer to your question as well. The webinar will be a snappy 45 minute session. So um, enjoy your lunch, uh, strap in. And without any further ado, please meet Scott Losey from Losey Consulting. Thank you. Hello, I'm Scott Losey, the founder of Losey Consulting. Pleased to be with you today. Thank you very much to the Infrastructure Sustainability Council for the opportunity. Next slide, please. We're coming to you from Mianjin in Brisbane, the traditional lands of the Turbul and Yagra. Next slide, please. So Losey Consulting is a friendly team of eight sustainability professionals that are keen to help you complement or supercharge your project delivery, navigate complex IS ratings with confidence that you'll achieve your targets, and build value for your clients and communities while maximizing IS rating outcomes. Next, please. We're known for successfully helping contractors, designers, and asset owners with all aspects of rating submissions, modeling energy, water, and materials, climate risk and resilience, auditing, coaching, and providing strategic advice. Next slide, please. So we have our fingers on the pulse. We have the capability to collaborate, and we stick to our values and add value. Next slide, please. So we have a team that has the latest training, highly connected to ISK. Uh, we're seeing innovations from many different contexts and on the projects in which we work, we're seeing best practice. We work across road, rail, dams, pipelines, and power lines. And we work with asset owners, contractors, and designers. Next slide, please. This means that we'll be able to bring fresh ideas to your projects, avoid rework and sidestep pitfalls. You can use our experience to manage rating outcome risk effectively and specify, design, and deliver sustainability with greater confidence. Next slide, please. So as an example, I've been a verifier with ISK for um, since the very beginning and verified over, seven, over 70 projects, including now the first version 2.1 design and as-built verification. So we're seeing what's going on and able to share that knowledge with you as we work with your projects. 
Next slide, please. We have the capability to collaborate. We have a critical mass of ISAPs here. And we can dovetail with your project delivery. We love collaborating. We try to communicate so that all can understand. And we're looking to upskill your team and problem solve across boundaries. Next slide, please. This will help you save money by getting you the expertise only when you need it, keep you on schedule during intense periods such as tenders, mobilization, and rating submissions, boost productivity using our depth to bolster your on-project sustainability teams, avoid reinventing the wheel by plugging in our tools and resources, and reducing reliance on costly consultants for future projects. Next slide. For example, we've been working with the Cross River Rail delivery team since 2018 uh, through tender evaluation, preparing program level credits, uh, assisting in developing innovations, reviewing credits prior to submission. We continue to support Cross River Rail in managing contractors, and we're now helping with the Gold Coast stations. Next slide, please. We've been in business for over 10 years. We're an established and secure business with senior professionals. These are direct employees of the company. We're driven by our core business values, and we look to focus on client needs and provide value for money. And we underpin this with our sophisticated management systems. Next slide. So this should give you predictable budgeting. Uh, we will be sticking by you to the end of lengthy and challenging projects. Our industry reputation can smooth your interactions with stakeholders, and we'll be able to satisfy your HSE key requirements. You can be confident in our mature interaction with your clients and stakeholders. Next slide. Our values include leading by example, truthfulness, fair dealing, purpose in our work, kindness and empathy, absence of errors, and these underpin and support all of the work that we do. Next slide, please. So we have our fingers on the pulse. We have the capability to collaborate. We stick to our values and we add value. Next slide, please. Thanks very much for your time. And I look forward to any questions you might have. Great, thank you very much, Scott. Really appreciate that overview. Uh, we'll now move on to our second presenter and that is Ben Hoff from Vital Chemical. Welcome, Ben. Thank you, Andrea, and good afternoon, everyone. As mentioned, my name is Ben Hoff and I'm the Chief Commercial Officer here at Vital Chemical. So Vital Chemical is a proud member of the Infrastructure Sustainability Council and is really grateful for the opportunity to present at today's webinar. For those of you who aren't familiar with Vital Chemical, we're an organisation that for more than 45 years has helped solve industrial challenges by providing environmentally and sustainably sound products and associated services that assist clients with erosion, erosion control, dust control, water treatment and concrete removal. As part of our membership, we're also a registered iSupply member and currently have a number of sustainably focused products listed on the directory um, with more products ready to be added in the near future. The products listed, currently listed include our three soil stabilization products, the Vital Bomb Mat P47, Vital Bomb Mat Stonewall, and Vital Bomb Mat HR. Uh, so each of these products are proven and trusted by both small and large civil construction and mining companies throughout Australia as their chosen product for either soil stabilization and dust suppression. In addition to these products, we have our popular water treatment solution, Vital Superclear, and our concrete cleaning solution, Vital Flowchem Thick with Rust Guard, which is utilised by concrete batch plants across the country, assisting with keeping their equipment clean and protected. Next slide. The last product also listed is our leading revegetation solution, VE Grow Mat Hydro Mulch. So VE Grow Mat is available in two variants, including both straw and wood fibre. And the variant in, utilised in the image on screen is our VE Grow Mat wood fibre product. So this product has been utilised on a number of IS Council rated projects, including the large scale project currently underway, Western Sydney Airport. In partnership with our key industry partners, BNK Revegetation and Landscaping, the Egromat Wood Fibre is the product responsible for supporting a substantial amount of the grassing works on this project. It's our VE Gromat that is also being used as a base product and combined with other vital chemical products that um, are currently being listed as Australian first on projects as we speak. Next slide. When utilising VE Gromat on an IS Council rated project, the following um, credits are, can be applicable. One of the key benefits of this product is its ability to support reduced water use. The heat treated wood fibres can hold up to 15 times their weight in water, significantly reducing water consumption on site. This unique moisture holding capacity assists with mitigating erosion and sediment impacts. Next slide. 
Another benefit of the agromat is its ability to be applied hydraulically to otherwise inaccessible areas and provides faster vegetation growth than traditional seeding methods. This was especially evident um, in the case study featured on screen, um, which was the Bruce Highway upgrade between Caloundra Road and Sunshine Motorway in Queensland a few years ago, where over 1 million square metres was revegetated. This case study is available in full on our website and provides detail around the various benefits beyond just those environmental benefits mentioned previously. Next slide. So hopefully today's information, whilst brief, um, provides some insight and guidance on our projects available um, for your IS rated um, projects, whether it be now or into the future. Um, my details are on screen, but available for Q&A later through the webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ben. Really appreciate that. Um, excellent to have Vital on this webinar. And now we'll move on to our next eye supplier, and that is One Click LCA. And we'll be hearing from Mariana Perez. Thanks, Mariana. Thanks, Andrea. Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Mariana Perez, business developer for Australia and New Zealand. And I'm here today to talk about One Click LCA and how we can help you decarbonize the construction industry. Next slide, please. So you might not know that our industry contributes um, up to 57% of global carbon emissions across the construction value chain, with the works building and infrastructure stock expected to double by 2060, we have to decarbonize now. Next slide, please. One Click LCA exists to address this challenge. Uh, we are a life cycle assessment provider and we have been in the market for more than 20 years with presence in more than 107 countries. Um, we provide solutions for buildings, manufacturing and the infrastructure industry to help decarbonize the industry. We have buildings uh, and infrastructure tools uh, where we calculate the embodied carbon of the entire building or the entire infrastructure project. Then uh, for manufacturing, the most basic level is um, that you can do a carbon footprint calculation. More high level is creating an EPD where you have to follow certain standards that report on several environmental impacts. So basically we're connecting the entire industry um, since our solutions are used by architects, engineers, manufacturing industries, construction material providers, construction companies, builders, investors, and also institutions. So quite a big range of users. Um, next slide, please. So it is a very user friendly and intuitive software with great support and training. Um, you can access the world's largest construction LCA data set, including global up-to-date, verify, supplier-specific, and generic LCA and EPD data sets. And with it, you can comply with more than 80 national regulations, standards, and also certifications, uh, specifically for uh, Australia and New Zealand. We have the Green Star tool and the EAST tool. Uh, also, the software has more than 20 bin and other integrations that support your existing workflow. Uh, and we have integrations like Revit, Solibri, Rhino, IES. Um, and also the software covers uh, all the project phases. So from early stages to the construction phase for buildings and infrastructure. And for products, we have also templates to help uh, with the product lifecycle assessment and the creation of the EPDs. Uh, our tool is pre-verified by EPD Hub, EPD International, and EPD Australasia. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, we are here to make construction sustainable. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, as I mentioned before, we have a specific tool approved uh, by the Infrastructure Sustainability Council that can be used to obtain the credits related to the calculation of the life cycle modules, that is A1 to A5 and B2 to B4. And the results are provided in midpoint LCA indicators as well as uh, IS and ViroPoint and also 
one clinical safe life cycle assessment uh, contributes to the innovation challenge credit for sustainable suppliers and IS supply. And here we have an example from the software showing the final design versus the baseline and all the different indicators. And it allows you to make a comparison between different designs and to have the results for all the required environmental impacts. Uh, I don't have a time to go through a demo, but I'm going to add all my, um, my information. So if you want to chat, just let me know. Next slide, please. And we also have the One Click LCA Academy, and our goal is to train 1 million professionals by 2030 with free training in low carbon and sustainability best practice. Uh, you can scan the QR code uh, you see on the screen to check all the different courses that we have available in the platform. Next slide, please. And so this is from my side. Uh, if you like to schedule a demo with me, here you have my content details. I'm gonna also going to drop them in the chat. Thank you very much for the opportunity to show a little bit about One Click LCA and our mission of decarbonizing the industry. Great, thank you, Mariana. Um, really appreciate that overview. Stay on, um, Mariana and Ben and Scott. Um, it's now time for our Q and A. Now, actually have to say there are no Q&A questions in the widget so if anybody has any thoughts any questions um, anything they'd like further clarification on please don't hesitate to pop those in right now I will keep an eye on that but I'd have some questions for you so um, in the meantime while you're thinking and typing I will get things um, kicked off um, so Scott I'll start with you you've been doing ratings and verifications for quite some time it'd be great to hear given your perspective and your span uh, overview of the the evolution of ratings, what's sort of changing in terms of your conversations with your clients um, in terms of their ambition, their expectations, what's sort of changing over time and what are the levers for change there? What are you observing? Well, definitely there's um, a wider range of people involved. You know, there's all sorts of people that have um, such a wide reach now and greater familiarity, but still at times surprisingly, um, quite a few people on new projects have never either heard of the rating scheme or they need to be stepped through it and so on. So there's still a fair bit of that. Um, you know, we're in a transition process now to version 2.1. And um, when we're doing a couple credits, it's okay. Once we start moving to full version 2.1 ratings, there's a, another step change in learning that, that we'll all have to go through. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, over to you, um, Ben. You were talking about, you mentioned some new products that were coming on. Um, would you like to give us a bit of an overview of what that involves and what your objective is in when you're sort of doing research and development of new products? What are you trying to uh, achieve and are you kind of observing an opportunity or hearing from your customers uh, about a certain gap that you're filling? How does that work? Yeah, look, it's a, it's a real blend, I guess. Um, we are definitely seeing, um, I guess, a shift in the market in terms of um, companies looking for ways to be, become more sustainable and, and conscious of what they're um, utilising in projects. Um, but it's largely headed up by our directors, you know, and their R&D focus um, within the circularity space. So some of the products um, in particular is, is Vital Biochar, um, which I touched on some of those sort of Australian first uses of that product combined with our GrowMat solution. Um, and then also our, our that I mentioned the Western Sydney Airport um, Vital Superclear Extra, which is a special blend that was developed for that project um, as well. So they're, they're, they're building upon, um, I guess, some of those core products um, and incorporating, I guess, more sustainable practices um, and resources as well. Excellent. Thank you. Mariana, um, are you st if you're able to pop back on, I've got a question for you as well. <laughs> um, we kind of cut you off a little bit there with the academy so i'd love to do a bit of a deep dive into that um so you mentioned you offer free training through that academy um can you give us a bit of an overview of what that looks like um what's involved and what's included yeah of course yeah so we have um free training we also we do like uh, free boot camps uh along the year like different uh boot camps they're free 
And we also have uh, free training in the platform. We have, for example, uh, trainings that involve how to create an LCA and also how to use the software to create the LCA and specific training in infrastructure. Um, also, again, in the training for buildings, we uh, add all the information related to Green Star and then ISK for infrastructure. And then we also have all the different integrations, like, for example, Revit. So in a specific training to teach you how to use the integration with the software and many like several different trainings so it, it is very good <laughs> excellent thank you excellent back to you um scott um could you give our audience a bit of an overview of um, and you talked a little bit about your approach um and i loved the inclusion of empathy and kindness in your corporate values can you give the audience a bit of an overview of what it's like to to kick off working with um, low c consulting what usually happens what's the process that takes place in, in terms of instigating um and, and getting you on board with for a project to start working together and collaborate Thanks, Andrea. Um, well, usually we find out about project opportunities in a sort of slow and interactive process. And then um, we start to connect with the teams, um, whether they're in their tender phase and so on, provide our advice on how they might go about positioning their submissions to be successful in tenders. Starting with us, uh, really, we need to understand what the priorities of our client is and where they need help, where they don't need help, and how, as we were saying before, we can add value without sort of just... Um, you know, being there and taking up time. So uh, what we want to do is to to find out what the specific needs are and, um, you know, come into that with, for example, if we're focusing on modeling and some of the more specialist things, we can do that. But if they need to bolster their capacity and, and have somebody on site um, from time to time uh, to be able to deal with regulators or contract administrators and so on, then we'll be looking to, to meet that requirement. Right. Thank you. Um, back over to you, Ben. I wanted to ask, um, does Vital offer services right across Australia and into New Zealand as well? So which are there any states and territories that you uh, are not active in currently? Yeah, look, we, as, as a business, we, we supply um, right across Australia um, and into New Zealand. Um, and our products are available in both of those markets, all of the products. Um, we do, in locally here in, in Queensland, where we're headquartered, we do um, apply our products as well. We offer those services. Um, however, we do have a large partner and distribution network. So I mentioned one in, in my presentation, um, but where we, have, we do have partnerships and, and distributor networks across um, both Australia and New Zealand. So whether it's direct from ourselves or perhaps, a, you know, um, an industry expert in the region, um, we do have partnerships in each state. Excellent. Okay, thank you. And lastly for you, Mariana, could you tell us a little bit uh, about the company, One Click LC? I think um, it's a global company, so perhaps you could tell us a bit about the um, activity happening beyond our shores. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it is a Finnish company, more than 20 years in the market. And we work across like 170 countries. Um, we have, well, I, I am in Australia. I have a co-worker in New Zealand. So we have that for the region. And we also have uh, in UK, North America, Latin America, Europe. It's like a, a huge um uh, several markets, uh, of course, uh, using the software. And it is a company that is growing constantly. Like we have around 200 employees uh, right now. And that was like increase uh, of, yeah, of, of the company this last five years, I will say. Brilliant. Right. Well, thank you very much to all three of you. Please stay on the call. Um, we're going to now move into the second half of our webinar and hear from three new presenters. The first of we live in a world of endless consumption of make take and throw away but the time has come to rethink the process aspire is giving businesses a new way to solve their issues with waste we've pioneered innovative software to create an online marketplace that trades waste as a resource it's a matching service designed for businesses to exchange or purchase resources that would otherwise be discarded because one business's trash can be another's treasure. 
Aspire's online platform sets businesses of any scale on the path to a circular economy and unlocks ways to save costs on waste disposal and even earn revenue from selling existing waste. The platform also helps to create new supply chains, connect businesses, build innovative solutions for reuse and recycling, and reduce the environmental impact of waste disposal. Aspire's matchmaking algorithm has connected hundreds of businesses to reuse, recycle, rethink, and repurpose their waste, creating cost savings, resolving issues surrounding waste, and diverting resources destined for landfill. Aspire, empowering businesses to exchange waste as a resource. Hi everyone, thank you so much for taking the time to listen and obviously find out a little bit more about Aspire and, and myself. Uh, obviously, Aspire, we're a circular economy platform founded on the principles of recycle, reuse and repurposing of resources. Uh, myself, I've been with the company for just over a year and I'm the partnership and business development executive working in the COO space. So I look after all our enterprise, new business, federal um, contracts, as well as our local government um, customers as well. So with regards to who we are and how we came about, we're a uh, CSIRO founded company. So 10 years ago, we were founded off the principles of yeah, repurposing and recycling materials. But the main um, premise for why we were created was to garner relationships with businesses and to also make sure that we're diverting from landfill, we're you know, reducing carbon emission avoidance, we're purporting on that as well, and we're also generating a bit of revenue, reducing your costs and, and so forth. So that's a little bit of a high-level overview of who we are. Um, the next slide will tell us a little bit about who we are through a video. Um, so if we can please play this, that would be wonderful. Okay, so now you've got a better understanding of who we are and how we came about. Um, like I was alluding to before, we were founded in 2014 um, by CSR on Data61. And since then, we've generated over $4 million in, in revenue. Um, we have had over 4,000 users, uh, close to 4,500 now. We're ISO verified to report on your CO2 carbon emission avoidance. Um, that's your industry standard. So obviously, we work through a third party that will determine exactly what the CO2 avoidance is. We have two main parts of our software suite, one of which is Aspire and the other is Aspire Plus. Uh, Aspire reports on what you're currently doing. So you can capture any data around your exchanges, how you're trading resources, what you're doing from a sustainability standpoint. Aspire Plus looks at your retrospective carbon footprint calculation. So you can look at what you're reporting on for the, up to the last 12 months. So you can use it as an inventory management, a contractor and supplier, uh, checklist and really sort of house all your information within, you know, one uh, software platform. So it's sort of a one-stop shop for, for everything you need to do from a sustainability standpoint. We're also um, B Corp certified. We're um, recently become a social enterprise, so we're part of the social traders um, <clears throat> affiliation. So that helps with all your tendering, um, contract securing, and those sort of things. We work a lot at a, at a high level with larger enterprises on helping with grants and, and the like. <laughs> We also do a lot around your track and traceability, so generating QR codes and making sure that, you know, we're on block to see where the resources come from and, and it's its journey to now. Um, we're obviously web-based and mobile applicable too, so it's literally just a case of downloading a click, snapping a photo and posting a resource to, to exchange. If we can please play the next video, it'll load to exactly what I was speaking to as well. So Aspire Plus, as we were speaking to, it's our software service that, one, you can create your ecosystem, two, add your transactions, and three, you submit your data. Um, so the whole premise of why this was founded is to capture the good things that are already going on within a business or an ecosystem, and to also provide impact certificates. So you can get a very clear picture of what you're doing from a resource exchange, from carbon emission avoidance, and some of the revenue generating from that, uh, the landfill diversion also, and some of the cost subversion uh, that may be you know, sought out by not sending things to landfill or having to hire skips or whatever that may look like. 
this is a little bit of our journey to date. So as you can see in 2022, we did our escrow payments, figured out a payment gateway. Uh, we developed a Spire Plus. Uh, in Q1 of 2023, uh, Cameron, our CEO, uh, traveled overseas and has just recently come back from Qatar and uh, Switzerland. He, he was presenting in Geneva and actually presented for the UN uh, at the World Sustainability Council uh, as well within uh, his last trip. So a lot of exciting things happening overseas. We're also expanding into the markets in uh, New Zealand and obviously domestically with with uh, travel to sort of all states. So we're expanding rapidly, which is wonderful. Um, in regards to some of the case studies uh, to support what we've spoken to, Sunshine Council are our big customers of ours. We have over 32 LGA customers on board and I'm based in Southeast Queensland. So they're one of the, the uh, LGAs that I look after. Um, here's a case where they had road tailing. So literally sitting by the side of the road, uh, they were going to have to pay the best part of uh, three quarters of a million dollars to dispose of them. Um, but they were lucky enough to reuse them and rehome them um, into a project that was just around the corner, actually, of Velodrome to support that. So that ended up in, you know, 3,000 tonnes being diverted from landfill, 2,400 tonnes uh, of carbon emission being saved, and then a financial uh, savings of over $80,000 as well. So to put that sort of in, in layman's terms, that's average of about 600 um, consumer cars off the road for a year. So it's a, it's a very, very big um, saving there that went into the aerogen. Here's another case study. So uh, talking to a five plus in, in this case, so capturing the, the data around what they had been doing well. So an organisation that came on board and then they realised within their um, March 30 to June 23 quarter of last year, they'd saved nearly half a million dollars, over 700 tonnes in landfill, 115 resources have been exchanged. So this was simply them uploading what they'd already been doing prior to coming on to Aspire. Uh, nearly 400 tonnes of emission saving as well. So you can see uh, on the right-hand side exactly what the value uh, supply chain and, and the contractors look like. So, you know, best part of 350 there, over 100 staff on boarded. So over 10% of their staff um, jumped on board to the, the platform. Here's some of our current partners and, and pipelines. So we're working with the likes of Stockland and Ventia, Transport New South Wales, Queensland Government, uh, HSBC, Stadiums Queensland, Queensland Government for uh, a, a big Olympics that, that may be coming up, not the one currently, but the one that's coming, um, amongst many other uh, projects. Thank you so much for listening. Obviously, here's a little bit about who I am. So if you'd like to scan the QR code on the left-hand side, that's uh, a link through to my LinkedIn. So please add me, reach out. Uh, if you want to connect after this, I'd obviously love to chat further. And if you want to know a little bit more about Aspire, please just scan the QR code in the middle and uh, it'll direct you to our website. Thank you so much and hopefully speak soon. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Nils. We'll now move on to our second to last presenter. That's Adrian Cahill from Reinforced Concrete Pipes Australia. Welcome, Adrian. Thanks, Andrea. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks to the Infrastructure Sustainability Council for hosting today. Uh, yeah, my name's Adrian Cahill. I'm the National Technical Manager for Reinforced Concrete Pipes Australia, uh, otherwise known as RCPA. RCPA has been manufacturing reinforced concrete pipes in Australia for around 30 years, and we introduced the vertical cast process for concrete pipe production into Australia back in the 1990s. Um, I'm here today to present EcoPipe, which is our innovative low carbon steel reinforced concrete pipe that's been developed by RCPA. Next slide, please. So over the last decade, RCPA's goal has been to develop a concrete pipe with low embodied carbon. Uh, and the key to achieving this is really a reduction in Portland cement usage. So after many rounds of lab trials, uh, we ended up with a promising concrete that utilised a very high percentage uh, of supplementary cementitious materials to replace Portland cement. A few years ago, this concrete was trialled at full scale with results exceeding expectations for, our, our, for workability and performance. Um, the process that RCPA uses, the vertical cast manufacturing, is an ideal application for this uh, concrete, also called you know, BX3 technology, uh, and that's due to its unique compaction methods and minimal finishing requirements. As after this uh, initial trials, RCPA has been engaged in a program of equipment upgrades around the country to allow full-scale production of eco, plant, eco pipe in all of our plants. <laughs> Next slide, please. 
So talk about some numbers, and at the end of the day, that's that's why we're doing this. Um, the initial modelling has been done, uh, LC, LCA modelling, sorry, has been done for eco pipe, um, comparing against our standard Portland cement-based concrete pipes. Uh, we do have an EPD for our standard uh, concrete pipes and are in the process of developing uh, one for eco pipe in due course. Now, the reduction in body carbon for the finished concrete pipes is influenced somewhat by the quantity of steel reinforcement that's in the pipe. Uh, but on average, there's around 40, at least a 45 to 50% reduction in the embodied carbon for eco pipes when compared to standard pipes. Um, you can see there's some, some metrics there. That's three of our production sites uh, on the East Coast, uh, two in Victoria and one in New South Wales. Um, but there's, for the concrete itself, you know, there's a substantial reduction in embodied carbon. And interestingly, when we do a comparison of uh, publicly available EPD data, um, that this shows that per metre of pipe, the uh, cradle to gate or the A1 to A3 uh, embodied carbon of eco pipe is less than that of a equivalent uh, plastic pipe. Next slide. So I just wanted to confirm and um, just a couple of photos here to demonstrate this. This, this is not a theoretical product. Um, EcoPipe is uh, now commercially available in Victoria and has been used in several projects in Victoria to date. Uh, in the last 12 months, uh, albeit it's early stages, but the use of EcoPipe in Victoria has reduced embodied carbon for uh, installed concrete pipes by approximately 550 tonnes. And you know, we're really keen to see that number grow rapidly as EcoPipe is adopted in other states uh, around Australia. EcoPipe's fully compliant with Australian standards. Uh, all of our raw materials that are used, such as the aggregates, cements, supplementary cementition materials and admixtures, all comply with the relevant Australian standards. And, and I don't want to get too technical, but um, I do need to note that EcoPipe is not a geopolymer uh, and the concrete is very much the same as a standard Portland cement. Last slide. So just to conclude, you know, RCPA is very proud of the development work that we've done to create EcoPipe uh, using our unique BX3 technology. Uh, concrete continues to play a critical role in our built environment due to its unique properties and proven endurance and innovations such as EcoPipe with BX3 can reduce that environmental impact without changing the 100 year service life that we need. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'd like to thank everybody for coming along today and hope that you've learned something new. Um, yeah, and if there's any questions, we'll uh, be happy to answer them in the chat. Thank you very much, Adrian. And now onto our final presenter for today's webinar, we have Adam Ferguson from SiteHive. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Andrea, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, as Andrea said, my name is Adam. I'm one of the uh, co-founders here at SiteHive. Um, and as the slide says there, uh, we're really focused on environmental management. Uh, for today's world. Uh, so we're, we're a technology uh, provider, uh, really focused on making it simpler and easier for you do, to do the environmental management with inside your business. Next slide, please. So just kind of run through a, a quick de description and overview of, of what we offer. Uh, and it's a combination of, of both uh, a physical uh, measuring device and also a software platform. Uh, so we have a, a range of, of monitoring devices, which we call SiteHive hexanodes, and we have uh, the, the multi, we have the noise, and we have vibration. In terms of the, the hexanode multi, uh, this is a all-in-one device which is measuring noise, uh, so measuring the decibel levels. Um, you can see on the screen there, there's an orange circuit board there. Uh, so not only are we measuring noise, but we're also measuring the direction of arrival of noise, and, and I'll explain why that's important in a moment. Uh, we have a uh, optical dust particle sensor at the bottom there. So that's measuring our, our PM 2.5 and our PM 10. Uh, and we also have, uh, you can see on the side of that image there, so, uh, a, a small little camera. So there's one thing sort of measuring uh, noise levels and knowing are, are you above or below your, your limits. It's another thing knowing what's the cause of the noise. So when there's an exceedance that occurs, say, for example, above 75 dB, uh, the, the hexanode multi will take a, an image, it'll take it from the direction that the, the noise is coming from, and it'll capture a six second audio file. So really giving you eyes and ears to what's actually going on in terms of that noise exceedance. Uh, this has been amazing for a lot of projects, being able to identify 
whether the cause of the noise exceedance is actually related to the work that they're doing or in fact it's actually related to uh, something happening off site. Um, the second product there is the hexanode noise, which is just the noise only solution. So you don't have dust, but you still get all the, the, the camera, the audio and the directional arrival of noise. And uh, last August, we launched the uh, hexanode uh, vibration device, uh, which is naturally me measuring uh, vibration. So it's very quick and easy to deploy these out on site, set them up with a solar panel and battery and have 24 seven unattended monitoring happening all the time. And if we just go through to, to the next slide, um, and from the device, it's communicating in real time via a SIM card through to the Site Hive platform. Uh, we have two versions of the, the platform, Site Hive Enviro and Site Hive Enviro uh, Pro. So this is where all the data comes together so that you have a, a dashboard where you're able to see the data in real time and you're able to make operational decisions. So for example, if you're having a, a bit of a dust spike, you might wanna get some water carts out there. So being able to, to know that things are happening right now and you're in a position either through some notifications via email or SMS to be able to know that, that there is an issue and that you can actually take some, some actions to address that. Uh, from the dashboard, we can then roll into our uh, reporting section, which is a, a very comprehensive uh, reporting area to to actually being a, to streamline the reporting and automate that process, whether that be for an audit, whether it be for just internal purposes, whether that be for a stakeholder, whatever the case might be, you're able to to actually uh, run those reports very quickly and easily. One of the uh, if I just go to the, the next slide, if I could, one of the things that we're super excited about is our AI platform. Um, so this is taking a, an audio file. Uh, converting it to a spectrogram and classifying it based on an AI model. So this is a, a very quick and easy way to be able to identify the noise that's happening on site. Um, so very keen for us to, to share a bit more about that. And then the final slide, I think that's us. Yes, so here's a couple of images of Site Hive in action. We're used in over 300 plus projects across Australia. And a call out to Adrian, who uh, I'm very pleased to say RCPA is one of our clients. Um, so across a lot of building projects, but also across operational sites across Australia and New Zealand. So if you've got any queries, please reach out via our website. We'd love to have a chat. Back to you, Andrea. Back to Andrea at the studio. Thank you very much, Adam. Uh, really appreciate that. If the last three presenters could all um, come back online and um, be ready to field some questions. We do have a few in the uh, Q&A widget, so thank you to those that have posted those questions. I'm going to start with um, one from Kelly. Hello, Kelly, by the way. Um, and this one is for Aspire. So um, the question was, did you encounter challenges in people engaging with the platform, essentially changing their current procedures, and how do you overcome this? So it's a bit of a behavioural change. So how do you address that um, we can see Nils. There you are, Nils. There we go. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, look, it's a, it's a constant struggle, to be completely honest. Um, the education space is something we're, we're dealing with on a daily. Um, as you can tell, I'm on the road today visiting sites and, and educating uh, business owners. So it, it's more about awareness and um, facilitating the change. So we sort of enable that. We show them how resources can be or repurposed and and it's it's quite rewarding of course because um that that's like the light bulb moment and then um they can then you know see see the benefit and it's almost self-perpetuating um moving forward so for us it, it's been about you know working at, at a high level with enterprise customers and really um also working with tendering and legislation and government um to push that agenda but also having feet on the ground to local business level to uh, make sure they're aware of what what can be done and how we can do that as well Thanks, Nils. And a really quick follow-up to that. Um, do you have a presence in Western Australia as of yet? We do, yes. Yeah, yeah. So literally speaking to Kerry from Switcher Thinking yesterday, we've got about seven hours as well as a, a first sort of 31. Um, lots of business, but we want to make sure that, again, local government um, helps bear some of the costs with the subscription and then we can enable what we're doing with sort of the East Coast uh, in WA as well. Great, thank you. Question for you, Adrian. Um, when will EcoPipe be available outside of Victoria? 
Uh, we're just finalising the, um, the the plan upgrades, and so it's it's pretty much uh, pretty much now uh, it's able to be uh, manufactured in on the east coast of Australia, and the plan is to have our West Australian factory up and running later this year uh, to be able to supply our pipe into that market. Fantastic, thank you. And a similar sort of question um, for you, Adam: Is Site Hive available in the New Zealand market as yet? Absolutely. So we've got a, a number of projects that are active in New Zealand right now. Um, and in fact, we uh, did a number of shipments this week to some New Zealand clients. So, so yes. Excellent. Okay. And a follow-up one for you as well. Um, don't unmute, unmute yourself just yet. Um, for projects with a lot of other noise sources nearby, how much time does it take to go through the audio and work out the source of the exceedances and how long are the audio files available to projects for? There's a few other questions there, but I'll let you answer those two first. Yeah, yeah, yep. So um, part of the, the goal is to make uh, it super quick and easy to be able to identify uh, what are the things that the project needs to focus on. So part of the AI classifier is separating out what is construction noise versus what is non-construction noise so that you can start to then focus on those things and go, right, these are the things we start to, to need to address. So very, very quick and easy to, to sort through those. In terms of the data, uh, look, we've been up and running for five years now. We've been uh, storing that data um, for five years. So for, we're, we're, we're sort of saying up to five years at a minimum, uh, but data storage is pretty cheap. So no problems being able to back um, access data. Yeah, fantastic. There's a few extra questions there from Eloise, but I'll, I'll get you to take those up with Adam offline um, as we are at the end of our time together today. So a very big thank you to all six iSupply businesses who presented for us in today's Spotlight on the Supplier webinar. An even bigger thank you to you, the audience, for your attendance and your attention and your questions. Please spread the word to your colleagues for future sessions so we can continue to drive support for these great businesses that are helping to build sustainable supply chains. Um, as you exit today's session, you will encounter a very short survey. We'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback on how we went today. And thank you again for, um, we're looking forward to seeing you in a couple of months time for our next suppliers in the Spotlight webinar. Good afternoon.